guys continuing with the cardiovascular system pathology this lecture is about the right heart failure uh, this we have already treated the left heart failure this failure is less common compared to the left heart but when it is present it is serious condition because the tissue normally that causes it is the lungs and the hypertension of the lungs and usually it is difficult to treat that or to reverse that if the if the damage has been done let's say by a smoker who's been smoking for a long time so let's look at it uh, when it occurs it is a problem that needs to be looked at uh, fast so first we we'll look at some of the stats then we look at the pathogenesis, the definition, the pathogenesis, clinical aspects of it and we will do a separate lecture about the management of the cardiac failure both for the left and right heart. So let us start, the stats why this, this topic is important, look in the US there are about more than 5 million patients with the cardiac problems, cardiac failure, out of those about a million patient get hospitalized every year, that is a very high number for a disease to cause hospitalization and that is a very expensive problem as well. Out of those unfortunately about 300,000 patients die every year of the cardiac failures. Again majority is the left heart side and majority within the left heart is systolic. So the topic of the right heart is not contributing to these 300,000 deaths. But again this is important that you have good command on the uh, cardiovascular system. There are 611,000 deaths in 20, there were th I believe 611,000 deaths in 2014 for the cardiac issues. So imagine this that all the cardiac issues are the top issues that cause in the chronic diseases that cause death. Out of those 300,000 are cardiac failures. So all the rest are small other problems. Then the majority is of course the systolic as we talked about it, diastolic dysfunction is lesser, left heart failures are more than the right heart. Um, the diastolic function we, we also talked about it, diastolic dysfunction is more common in elderly and in women. Uh, common causes for systolic is the damage to the tissue that is ischemic heart diseases and infarction or coronary artery diseases. On the diastolic side, the diastolic dysfunctions are usually the valvular problems or the afterload or preload issues, we will talk about that in a second. And then high output failure is a minor uh, problem as well, normally occurs in the hyperthyroidism or in wet beriberi, we will talk about it. So that is the stats, so that should tell you that as a doctor or as a, as a health professional you have to have a good command on the cardiovascular system. Now the right heart failure, what is the definition of the heart failure or the cardiac failure? It is the failure of the heart to fulfill the needs of the tissue or the failure of, of the heart to eject enough blood that meets the nutritional needs of the tissue. This failure can be of two types, one is where the heart has a problem and it cannot pump enough, for example it is damaged that is systolic function or it is dilated that is diastolic dysfunction or alternatively heart is normal, heart is okay but the body wants more oxygen, body wants more uh, blood to flow through it, body has reduced the total peripheral resistance and allowed more and more blood to come in. What are those conditions? Hyperthyroidism, wet beriberi, atriovenous fistula which may be uh, by design intentional or which may be by a knife wound, uh, sepsis, so many such conditions, severe anemia many conditions can actually heart was normal but the body somehow allowed more blood to come in or asked more blood to come in and heart cannot do that and, and the venous return is not increasing, heart is not pumping enough, it starts failing. So it is not necessary, the point to remember is it is not necessary that heart is damaged to fail, sometime body can put load on it as well. So let us start with the right heart failure, first of all what is the definition of the right heart failure? The definition of the right heart failure is that the amount of blood that comes to the right heart, the venous return is not met with the proper equivalent ejection, that is what the, what the failure is. So if you see here in the diagram, the fluids, the blood that comes back in the right heart, so let us say we brought in 50 ml, in a normal heart if you bring in 50 ml, heart will eject 50 ml, that is how it would keep a balance. Now what is happening in this failing heart, you brought in 50 ml but 40 ml went out, where did the 10 ml go? That stayed in the heart, do you think that heart has enough 
reservoir to keep the extra blood in it? No, it does not. And if this starts happening with every beat, that one or two or three milliliters of blood starts pooling in the heart, ultimately the heart is now either have to forcefully contract to push that out, which it would do in the beginning, or slowly it would become hypertrophied in the long term and or it might start dilating. So, the basic, basic problem, the basic explanation of the definition is that the amount of blood returning should be the amount of blood ejected. If that does not happen, then we have a failure. Okay.